Welcome, one and all. We are live once again for only the third time this weekend, so uh, we'll make the most of this. Um, don't think this is going to go more than an hour tonight uh, if we make it a full hour. Um, my dinner didn't settle the best with me, so um, I'm I'm just sort of feeling like I want to go to bed. So. <laughs> Uh, I, I've, I've got one drink and, uh, when that's gone, we'll probably wrap this all up, but let's see who is here tonight. We've got Bella, David Grishko is here and Joe, welcome all three of you. All right. So... Tonight, we're going to talk briefly. Uh, we're not necessarily going to do a demo or anything, but we're going to talk briefly about um, what seems to be a trend uh, to, to an extent lately is uh, several groups are putting out overlapping products uh, billed as a personal cloud OS. And in all reality, what this really amounts to is, uh, in most cases, you are uh, given a script to install Docker and a um, user-friendly web-based front end uh, that has an app store for, for, uh, for the whole thing. And it makes it easy for people who don't have a server administration background uh, to get something like this up and running uh, to have some applications that are hosted locally uh, for themselves or their family or um, in, in some cases, in many cases, you could actually take these and run them on um, Vulture or um, Linode or Google Cloud Platform or Amazon or Azure or what have you. Uh, so they actually had it in the cloud. Uh, the, the benefit is that uh, much uh, in the same way that something like Nextcloud will give you full control over something, um, this does the same or very similar things um, with a different focus shall we say. So, um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, for, for those who aren't um, familiar with all the terminology, um, the cloud is really just, generally, it's somebody else's computer. Uh, so if you are setting a personal cloud up for maybe other family members, uh, they are accessing resources on your computer, um, and you are the administrator of, of that cloud service, uh, even if it's lo running locally in your home network. Uh, in many cases, yes, you would consider this to be a home lab of sorts, uh, but uh, if it has to meet... Uh, uh, what uh, many, many of us of, of the male persuasion in the IT industry call the, the spousal approval factor. Um, and I don't have to worry about that, but uh, I, I, I suspect several of you out there are probably married or in some sort of relationship. Um, so, you, you know, the spousal approval factor is a real thing, and you don't necessarily want to be performing 
experiments that uh, get your uh, better half, uh, quote unquote, uh, uh, put you on his or her bad side, right? So, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I don't have to worry about that. So, um, anyway, let's see who all has joined in chat. Uh, TVJ made it in. Welcome, Ezra. Thanks for reminding me I have a six pack of Guinness in the fridge. <laughs> nice. Hopefully, you're not going to try to drink all six of those tonight. Ashley made it in. Hopefully, you're keeping Josephus under control tonight. Um, personal cloud, isn't that a home lab? Well, that that's that's for for each individual to decide, I suppose. <laughs> Got that moody light going on, yeah. Uh, maybe I don't have them cranked up high enough tonight. I didn't have a lot of patience to futz with it before the stream, so it is what it is. Uh, the cloud, someone else's computer. Yep. I've killed the internet once or twice. Uh, and yet you're still here to tell about it. I also killed the power once and yelled, I'm okay. <laughs> and, and, and then you hear the voice from the background that says, Damn, I just paid the insur the life insurance bill. Oh, I I'm sure that would never happen with, with you guys. Uh <laughs> All right. So let's bring the other screen on. And I'll put myself up in the corner. All right. So one of the first of these contenders i guess you could say is called casa os and uh as i described this has a pretty front end uh, where you can install apps from the app store that they provide so curated apps they've um quality check them to make sure that everything is going to install in a consistent basis um, with little fanfare or or issues um, and you, you know this has some some nice apps that are ready to be installed adguard home there's pie hole there's next cloud there's duck DNS uh, Plex and Jellyfin and uh, several others. Um, and it says 20 plus pre-installed Docker-based apps, 50 plus community verified uh, self-hosted apps. Uh, so, you know, this is one of those solutions where if you don't want to build it completely yourself uh so meaning that you would install a server os and then install docker on top of it and then install each application and verify that it works and verify that backups are running and you know go through the whole nine yards um, you, you know, this is a potential solution for you. So Casa OS, um, you may have heard of some of the products that the, the company behind Casa OS makes. They make the Zima board and the Zima blade, and they've got a Zima cube coming out, which is a, a network attached storage box that they've uh, built. Um, it's got a, a nice looking interface. Um, 
it says flexible dashboard. I, I mean, it's it's low frills. It's you know got that sort of Mac OS mountain scene in the background, um, and y- you know you can discover new apps. But you've also got access to some of the command line stuff, and you can do custom Docker container installs as well. So beginner friendly, if you're just dabbling in this area, but it gives you the flexibility enough to um, edge into some of the custom stuff, right? Uh, so you can dip your toe into into that um, realm. Um, so there you've got their pretty interface and you've got access to command line stuff if you want to utilize it. Um, and of course, you know, there are Zima boards and Zima blades. You can get this preloaded. Um, and, you know, there's a bunch of their apps that they've got ready to go. Uh, if you want to step up, um, the more professional uh, iteration of CAS OS is called Zima OS. Not to be confused with that nasty beer-like beverage that came out in the 90s um, that was clear and tasted like turpentine. Um, But uh, uh, Zima OS is in open beta testing. uh, And there's here's some feature comparison. Um, the Zima OS will give you remote access functionality and auto backup. And then there are some other things that are coming soon. Uh, how, how soon that will be, I don't know, but it says coming soon. But if you want to be in on the ground level and do some beta testing and see a product evolve in front of your eyes over the course of weeks or months, then you may want to set up a VM and test out Zima OS. Um, I have played with Casa OS. It seems pretty solid. There's usually some little bump in the road I run into, and then I go back to using something else. Um, I've not used it for a couple of versions now, so uh, maybe after this live stream, um, there will be interest enough in me doing a dedicated video for each of uh, the solutions we're going to talk about tonight, uh, just to explore the feature sets of each one. So again, there doesn't seem to be a... uh, production level release date um, available for Zima OS. But, you you know, maybe by the fall, they will have a, you know, uh, stable version out, whether it's feature complete or not. Um, You know, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, right? Uh, The next one we've got is called Umbrel, U-M-B-R-E-L. And just for the sake of argument, I do want to point out that the links for all of these are in the description of the video before anybody asks. Um, So after the fact, go check out the uh, description and uh, get all the links that uh, you could desire there. Uh, So the 1.0 release uh, is set to release tomorrow. So uh, this might be something that I get on the bandwagon and and grab and review this week. 
So again, Umbrel is going to have a similar um, easy to use interface and give you a lot of uh, pre-configured applications that you can choose from, from their little app store. And again, it's a good way for people new to this arena to dip their toe in and see if there's something they're interested in. Um, uh, there's an entire app store. They've got some apps scrolling down here. And as you can see, there's a theme with these, these different solutions. They, they all seem to do this uh, opposite direction scrolling here. Hold that thought for just a minute. All right. Um, but again, uh, 1.0 release is due out tomorrow. So uh, if all else, if everything else goes well, then uh, I may very well be uh, recording a video for this tomorrow, potentially for release on Tuesday. All right. So Umbrel 1.0 coming March 18th, 2024, which is tomorrow. Um, then we've got, you know, host, Y U N O host, uh, it's a dot org again, available in the, uh, description of the video. Um, and this again, uh, might not be as pretty as the other ones, uh, but it provides the same basic functionality. Um, and see if they've got any screenshots. Um, it is Debian based. Um, it does, it says it has a friendly web interface as well as a CLI, more than 500 apps in the catalog. And I need to turn my phone down. My apologies. Um, so this one, Unohost, has been around since February of 2012. So this one is, is the uh, um, the old uh, oldest of the bunch, I guess I would say. And then finally, I came across this one most recently. Um, and uh, let's see. So move to sandstorm.org. Uh, I might have to update the, the link in the description, but again, uh, this has document editing, file storage, task and project management, and chat. And since they are nice enough to provide us with a demo, we'll just launch their demo. Um, so as you can see, you get <clears throat> some apps that appear to be already installed. And then you've got a big plus button to install from the uh, app store or marketplace, whatever you want to call it. There are some games in here. There are programmer oriented things. There are um, video sharing uh, things. Um, this appears to have a good number of applications available and uh, uh, and even web analytics so you don't have to rely on uh, a certain uh, large company but um, again 
if you want to install something, let's find something simple here. Um, uh, so we'll just install Etherpad. It's a document editor. Um, got it. Create new pad. And in, a, in the matter of a moment or two, it will install this and you can start editing a document. Um, so that, uh, in a rather quick fashion, um, it is a little bit about each of those offerings. Um, and you know, I would be interested <clears throat> in hearing, uh, from people in chat, if there is, um, uh, one of these in particular that you've heard of, or that you're interested in seeing a more in-depth review on how to install it, you, you know, working with it a little bit, um, you know, what, what are your thoughts from, uh, from that standpoint? Um, who knows? I might take a look at all of them except possibly Zima OS, which is still in beta. I don't typically do beta software on this channel, but, um, yeah, you, you know, it's, it's all good. So, um, Mm -mm -mm. Let's come back here and I'll put myself full screen again and we'll try to catch up with chat a bit. Um, uh, what you drinking? Uh, I've got a screwdriver again tonight. I bought more uh, orange juice when I went shopping today. <laughs> Uh, actually we joke about that all the time <laughs> about having the life insurance paid up. <laughs> um, what you drinking hair of the dog that <laughs> bites you. Uh, Jacob Johnson is here. Welcome. I like this website design and Tony made it. All right. Um, Hi, this is Jagesh. I'm from Pakistan trying to set up fog, but I've never used a computer before. Can you help? Right. Yeah. Uh, in 10 minutes or less? No, I probably can't help. It's going to take longer, longer than that to, uh, uh, to install fog, even on the fastest computer I've seen. Uh, Alonzo Smith is here. Welcome. Um, bless you. We must have caught on that I sneezed, um, which is probably an insult, you heathen. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> uh, click on what you need. Simple like Linux Lite. Yep, pretty much. Um, Casa seems like the best one. Yeah. Um, it, it, uh, it, it's the one that gets the most press from what I've seen lately. Um, now I'm, I'm curious to see how that's going to move forward with them working on Zima OS as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, you, you know, it's, it's, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'm torn on this whole private cloud thing, cloud topic. I feel like why not just get a Synology if you're going to buy hardware to run these apps self-hosted? Um, yeah, there's there's definitely there's definitely um, that angle on it as well. Um, Uh, so, um, 
Yeah. I mean, I've never gone too far into Docker apps on my Synology because I got the Synology mainly for um, storage. And um, the the uh, super micro servers I've got have way more power than the Synology. Um, and I can um, back that up to Proxmox backup server and it all works nice in the background. Uh, but if you are constrained on space uh, and have some sort of backup procedure in place to back up stuff on the on the uh, uh, from the Synology to somewhere else, uh, more power to you. Um, you know that that seems uh, seems to be a a solution that is growing in popularity because uh, it's the only one I have heard of. <laughs> um, if you're a techie, why wouldn't you sp just spin up Dockers on your own? Well, so that depends in large part on which Linux distribution you're using to run your Docker stuff on. Um, depending on that, uh, you could run into stability issues that would not typically exist on a product like Casa OS or some of these others, or even on a Synology, because those are updated less frequently uh, in a fashion that might break something. So... And if you're enterprise, why would you uh, just use the actual public cloud? Um, well, cost, um, you know, privacy, um, distrust of large corporations that run those cloud services. Uh, any of a number of reasons, Joe. <laughs> I, I got to play devil's advocate here a little bit, you know. Huh? Um, Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Maybe that's a green beer that washed up on shore or something. Uh, my internet is slow. Uh, greetings. Uh, uh, Gratian, Gratian, um, uh, my German is very bad. I took a year of German in high school and it was not a pleasant experience. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I, I was told my whole life that, uh, my, my, my ancestry, at least based on my surname, uh, originates somewhere in Germany. Um, Although, according to Ancestry.com, uh, most of my ancestry uh, comes from uh, England, and, and and since it's St. Patty's Day, I, I will I will uh, I will admit to the the three percent Irish heritage that uh, um, may or may not be running through my veins. <clears throat> this is the only day of the year I'll claim it, but hey. Um, so anyways, uh, yep. Germany in the house. So welcome. And, uh, my C Prince is from the UK. Oh, it was a screwdriver. Okay. Okay. A green handle screwdriver. Got it. Got it. Um, 
Um, yeah. Um, the, the only, the only German I really remember, I had a, a classmate, uh, his last name was Hoon, H U H N, which, uh, I, I was told is chicken in German. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that. <laughs> I don't have a German English dictionary. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I really, really don't remember much from that class. That was a bunch, a bunch of years ago, a bunch of years ago. <laughs> um, but uh, happy to have you here. And uh, um, I, I know I've had uh, viewers from Germany for a while. Um, so I have pretty much got Europe covered. I've got people watching from Russia and from the Middle East and India and all over the world, really South America and even a Canadian or two for good measure, uh, because they're so damn nice that they, they, they are supportive of their, their neighbors to the South more so than what America is supportive of our neighbors to the South. But uh, that's a whole other political conversation we won't get into tonight. <laughs> um, what's your screwdriver ratio? So my screwdriver ratio is about that much vodka and the rest of it's orange juice. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I probably should have mixed it a little stronger, but... Hey, we're, we're having fun, right? When I say enterprise, I mean Fortune 500. Will they be using these personal clouds? Uh, no, not, not, these in, not these specifically. Um, but they would be running what would be considered the, the private cloud or some sort of hybrid uh, where they run part of the servers on-premise and part of it uh in in a public cloud of some variety or other and welcome luke from jamaica hopefully it's warmer there than what it is in michigan it was snowing here today it was snowing here today Uh, I guess I am just confused of the market. I feel like it is aimed at us, but we would tinker and do our own containers. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I sort of flip flop on it because if I just set something like Casa OS up and just let it hum along in the background and don't futz around with it much, then I don't have problems. Um, and if I do something separate, then, you know, it's likely for something for the YouTube channel. But, excuse me, for myself, um, for any sort of project that I want to be stable and not be an experiment, uh, if you will. Um, sometimes doing something like Casa OS or something similar isn't a bad thing, at least for the duration of a given project. So, for instance, if I were going to spin up a document management system, if there's one available in Casa OS, I might do that just to... Uh, just to let it sit there and hum along in the background and not mess with it a lot after it's up and running and, you know, get things where I need them to be. And then, you know, if I need to replace it with something else, I can, <clears throat> but, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, one of those things you could, I could go either way, I suppose, on it. 
Uh, means greetings from Germany. Not that I speak German, but a translator is always handy. Uh, yeah, it's just I, I can't manage the translator while I'm running the stream. <laughs> so thank you for that, Zach. Um, and if less than us in tech knowledge, personal cloud is probably too complex, hence Synology. Uh, well... So, yes and no. Um, generally, I've found that less savvy tech people that or less savvy people that have an interest in tech either go out of their way to learn on their own, um, which at least when I was starting out, it meant... You, you know, secondhand, thirdhand machines that you push to the limits to do everything you could think of. Um, and then it went to the recycle bin, right? Um, when it was no longer useful. Um, my my beginnings with Linux, for instance, were, were very, um, uh, I don't know, shall we say quaint by today's standards? Uh, so this was like 1998-ish, uh, and it was a hand-me-down 486DX4120, um, and I installed uh, Red Hat, was it 4.2 or 5.0 on it? Uh, this was pre-Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, and I was able to run the early versions of VMware, the product that became VMware Workstation. And it wasn't fast, uh, certainly with, you know, a single core, uh, it wasn't fast, but it gave me that taste and, uh, you, you know, the, they, 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 uh, say in some shady businesses, um, you know, the first taste is free and then you've got to pay up or somebody will come break your legs, right? <clears throat> um, so anyways, yeah, Fortune 500s have a hybrid cloud, different tech exists out there, things like OpenStack, absolutely. Um, and I do think I mentioned hybrid cloud in my rambling there. Uh, Joe agrees. Uh, what do you choose to use uh, cloud hosted by you or do you prefer those from Microsoft or Amazon? Um, so uh, I tend to use um, smaller cloud providers uh, like Vulture and Linode um, and DigitalOcean. Um, they, I think all three of them have been around quite a while. Uh, I think Linode was even around before Amazon was in the business, but uh, don't quote me on that. Um, so for my own stuff, um, it, it depends on what application it is. So I have had for uh, several years uh, an instance of NextCloud running on Vulture on a $5 a month um, VPS, right? I actually took down the old server today and spun up a fresh one um, because... Uh, I had hit the, the limit of what I had been using and um, needed to update to a newer base OS version and uh, tweak a couple of the settings. So I, I used it as an excuse to tear down the old server, spin up a fresh one with a current OS and current version of NextCloud on top. Um, so for something like that, 
um, to save pictures off my phone and uh, everything, you know, I use Vulture or, you know, one of the other public cloud options, uh, generally a smaller one. And then, you know, stuff for the channel, uh, I will often spin up on my own servers here in my apartment. Uh, but like for our small business, I use cloud services, Dropbox, for example, and Slack. Sure, I could save money and do it myself, but I'm not going to have the same high availability, availability and I'm still going to have to manage it. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, David Grishko says, right now I'm writing a Python script that's going to sync my Proxmox cluster and its VMs with NetBox. The network is going to be the single source of truth uh, for all my networks and configs. Nice. I might share it if it's good for public use. Put it this way, I would never manage my own stuff for business. I don't have the capacity to have data center redundancy power management, et cetera. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I mean, it's it's a choice either way, right? Um, uh, there's a lot you can do with, with uh, scripts, scheduled scripts in the background to run backups uh, to a cloud um, provider and encrypt stuff on the way up um, and, you know, run the main instance of something locally. Um, you, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it all comes down to what you're comfortable with um, and how much money you want to throw at the problem. Right. I love next cloud. Very good. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I'm, I've been a big fan of Nextcloud ever since, um, um, what's his face split from own cloud. I'm drawing a blank on his name, German dude. Um, Frank, um, uh, Frank Karlicek. Uh, hopefully I didn't butcher that too much. Um, anyways, um, so yeah, I, I followed him when he did the switch from own cloud and launched next cloud. And I just have been with next cloud ever since. Um, so I've got a few businesses to use Linux Lite with LibreOffice. They've saved a small fortune not paying for various rental software. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I think there's a, I think there's a case to be made um, for these. I know there are providers out there that will do managed next cloud instances for you for a fee um, where you don't have to manage the whole server yourself. Um, you just um, end up with a private instance of next cloud and they handle all the back end maintenance and you manage users and permissions and things on top of it. And it's more private than Dropbox and Google Cloud will ever be. Um, <clears throat> and Nextcloud does have the option of turning on end to end encryption. Um, so, you, you know, it's, it's all a balancing act. And, uh, what you're comfortable with. I think people say cloud is expensive, cloud is insecure, but really depends on perspective. My Proxmox box is sitting at my office and way less secure than in the cloud and arm guards at the data center. 
Yeah. Um, so I've always countered people that say the cloud is insecure with, um, the, the counter argument I use is, um, how many years have you been doing cloud security? Uh, how many years have you been, you know, doing any of the security stuff? And do you have more experience doing it than people that are running the data centers at Google or Amazon or Microsoft or what have you? Um, now, myself, I typically end up working with small businesses. Small businesses don't have that level of trust, nor do they want another monthly service they've got to pay for. So, you know, I am stuck very much pushing them into a hybrid approach where if they're going to run something local, then they have to have some sort of off-prem backup and they have to have a way of testing those backups. Can you restore and have it work? So if that if you're using a Synology, that means you'd have to have two Synologies so that you can test restoration. Um, so, you, you know, it's, it's, um, <clears throat> it's, it's a balancing act in large part. I use NextCloud ever since I discovered it. Uh, I only use it, talk, email, contacts, everything there. Seems brilliant for both a business and for private. Yes. The 0.001% risk of someone looking at my data is not my concern. My concern is flood, power, hard drive failure, network failure. Right. Um, I, again, my perspective is that I work mostly with small businesses and, um, you, you know, and nonprofits that have very little budget. So I do what I can to get by and try to safeguard things as much as possible. And sometimes that just means um, putting a backup drive in a fireproof safe and hoping for the best. And having a good plan for rebuilding things if a disaster happens, right? I'd argue the small fortune saved will easily be lost if you lose your customer data because you are an expert and something goes wrong. Sure. It, it all depends on what kind of business you're running and if you are actually storing a lot of customer data on-prem. Um, so in the case of the library, uh, our main um, patron data, uh, those stupid... Uh, Turn those reactions off, please. Okay, hopefully those won't come back. Um, our patron data is all stored uh, in the cloud. It's it's a company that we've worked with to uh, set up our library catalog system and all that backend data. So they handle all the backups for that. Um, our printing system goes through um, an online service for that. Um, and the staff, by and large, everybody but me, uh, uses Canva and um, Google Drive and Google Docs for 99% of what they do. Uh, I'm the odd man out. I use LibreOffice on my local machine and I use our clone to sync my documents to my Google Drive because um, 
I can encrypt it that way. Uh, so, yeah. As a broadcaster, I know how to generate your own power and have redundancy, and we have less downtime than some big cloud companies. Yeah, that's a fair argument, too. <laughs> oh, look at McDonald's that was taken out recently. <laughs> Uh, Facebook has been down for more time than my stations. When it comes to security, I can still screw up and open an S3 bucket to the whole world. Uh, the fact that it is in the cloud doesn't make it secure. This is true. This is true. It's only as secure as the person managing it. And Joe Counters, you know more than most. That said, when you upload a file to Object Store, it is replicated automatically across multiple geographic regions uh, with separate power. Cloud is only as secure as people who use it. That's anything. Backup drive in a fireproof, safe, cold, hot storage. I'm thinking in our specific business, if we shoot for a day of video, especially a one-time event, if I lose that, I could literally lose multiple customers. Big blast radius. Sure. Sure, that's fair. Goldilocks storage. This one's too hot. This one's too cold. This one's online. <laughs> well put, Bob. Well put. I think the basic answer for this conversation is that it depends. Uh, it depends on the budget, the business, and your abilities. Yes, well put, Jay. I agree. I agree. Also, some of the footage we take is under NDA. If it were to leak, we'd be sued. Well, that's why you've got insurance. I hope. <laughs> and if you don't have insurance, take that up with the boss. Um, yep. All right. So we have made it 52 minutes and 40 seconds, 40 odd seconds into this. Um, so yeah. Um, I guess we, we kind of got off in the weeds a little bit from where I, I wanted this to go tonight, but, um, uh one of the one of the use cases I did want to bring up for something like this is that um given that with the changing and increasing system requirements for Windows 11 uh and future versions of Windows, I, I'm sure aren't going to be much different. Um, you know, there are going to be a lot of machines here shortly that are going to be obsoleted uh, in the mainstream world, right? And, you, you know, if you've got some tech abilities, and you're willing to tinker, then one of these solutions is not a bad use for that, you know, seven-year-old Windows 10 machine that can't run Windows 11, but you don't want to put in the recycle bin quite yet either. So, you know... Um, if, if you couple something like a Casa OS or one of these other solutions with uh, something like our clone, uh, you can do encrypted backups to Google Drive or Mega or Dropbox or any of a number of other cloud providers or multiple of those. And, you know, have yourself pretty much covered. And if your, um, you know, 
for instance, a, a family where there are two young kids and there's not a lot of extra cash flow, um, then something like this might be perfect um, as far as meeting the, the um, requirements of what you want to do with what you have and uh, spending a minimal amount. Right. So, you, you know, there are, there are use cases where something like this uh, could be useful for a group of people. So anyways, um, let's see. We do have insurance. That's why I don't have nice things anymore. <laughs> well, you know, Bob knows all about storage and personal clouds. Um, have a good night, Jay. When has Windows ever wanted less? Yeah, it, it, exactly. <laughs> Very good point, Bob. Uh, okay. Now Bob's personal cloud. I trust <laughs> a major UK supermarket couldn't deliver online orders yesterday as their computers, etc., went wrong. Wasn't there a big library in the UK that had to close for a period, uh, because of a breach? Um, I forgot. It seems like it, because it seems like we were talking about that at work one day. Um, uh, yes, there, there was, um, uh, from the guardian. Thanks to a shadowy hacker group, the British Library is still on its knees. Uh, and this uh, all started in October of 2023. And uh, uh, article is more than a month old. But yeah, this is uh, interesting. Yeah, so from Computer Weekly in January, British Library CyberTech explained what you need to know. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> I'll take that back off. Um, is there a resource chart of requirements? For Casa OS, um, I think it runs on basically anything that you can install, like Ubuntu server on. Uh, I'm not sure they list requirements on this page or not. Um, Wonder if their GitHub will have more information. Um, features. <coughs> uh, official support. Debian 12, Ubuntu 20.04, and I know I've used uh, newer versions than that. Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, community support for others doesn't really list uh hard requirements so i'm assuming anywhere you can run one of these operating systems uh you can run casa os 
the limitation is just going to be how many containers you can run um, on top. <laughs> uh, no, we're not going to install it tonight. Um, I don't know how much longer I'm going to keep the stream going. We've we've hit hit the one hour mark, uh, but I'm running out of steam for the day. Uh, just popped in. Good night, Bob. Oops. Uh, yes, it's the library that has a copy of every book, right? Uh, for the document manager, for example, what power computer do I need? <laughs> uh, you're running out of steam, right? Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much what I wanted to cover tonight. Um, and like I said at the beginning, I will probably do dedicated videos for several of these probably before the end of March because I need to hit my my number um, for for the challenge this month and. Uh, uh, I'm already a few videos behind, so uh, I, I'm trying to make up a few here along the way. <laughs> um, was it last night that did you in? Um, possibly, because I was up until 3 o'clock this morning after that stream, but... Um, I drank coffee starting at 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. last night, and then I had two screwdrivers and three shots of whiskey. Um, so I think it was a combination of all of that, but I slept great last night, let me tell you. I probably could have done with about two and a half hours more of sleep, but um, I just, when I was up, I was up, and that was it. <laughs> Uh, I've got an idea for a video you could do. I'll email in a day or so. Okay, very good. All right, so before we go, um, does anybody have anything they want to share? Any exciting projects they're working on this week that uh, you can divulge without violating an NDA or anything? Um, or if you've got a suggestion for a video that uh, you want to throw out there i'm i'm game for suggestions as well um so yeah um yeah well we'll see where where this goes but um i i figure we'll make it to about an hour and 15 minutes and then i'll wrap things up uh so i can uh, wind down after this just a little bit and then drop into bed and start my week in the morning. <laughs> Since my, I've got an odd schedule this week, uh, because of my dentist appointment on Wednesday. And, uh, so I'm working later tomorrow than I normally would. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just kind of throwing my week off a little bit. Uh, working on attaching an antenna mount on my truck. Magnetic. Ooh. Get some wicked strong magnets there. You're, you're going to have, like, some sort of uh, rubberized coating on them so, that, so they don't mar up the, the paint on your truck, right? Connecting it to an LTE modem. Okay, uh, you're gonna you're gonna have one of those uh, um, those uh, what is it the the Mister Mister Router Mister whatever um, um, your your fancy thing that you you uh, have. 
for your live streams. You're going to have that like mounted in the truck behind the seat or something. And your, uh, um, go gallivanting around at night and, and, uh, uh, being up to nefarious things with, with your, uh, antenna on your truck. <laughs> I didn't build the mount. Yes, rubber takes a huge amount of force to remove. Uh, video ideas. You should do a video about LibreOffice and how you can save money compared to rental software. Yeah, I've done LibreOffice in the past, and the videos on LibreOffice do not do very well with my audience. Um, nor do I really have a a passion for office software. <laughs> I, I use it um, for, for what I do, but uh, as far as explaining it, I, it's, it's not my cup of tea or coffee or alcohol, what have you. Not going to be Mr. Nat. Uh, I have different ones. Peplink. Okay. Look up Parsec antennas. Oh, those are interesting. Um, ooh. Parsec Akita panel antenna. Interesting. Bernie's Mountain Dog. <laughs> 4G LTE and 5G antennas were designed to perform. Interesting. Public safety 5G antennas. Nifty. Mobile antennas. 4x4 four four MIMO, Wi-Fi, cellular, Belgian Shepherd. Har har. There you go, Joe. Don't you need a Doberman? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um go to the mobile belgian shepherd i'm in mobile um belgian shepherd interesting Specifications. Dimensions 2.44 inches by 3.82 by 14.96. All right. That's not a small antenna, but <laughs> all right. Interesting. I'm thinking broad range search topics. Yeah, I I mean I could try it. I would have to come up with some sort of angle on it to uh um really sell the video, but again, I I've done videos on LibreOffice before and they just they were some of my worst performing videos that I've ever done. I'll be able to broadcast Wi-Fi. Nice. Very nice. All right. Anybody else have a last uh, thought you want to put out there? Almost 11 p.m. Eastern. Um, 
figure if I can be in bed by midnight, I'll be doing great. So, yeah, I don't think. At one point, I had a, a, an install of Casa OS. I don't have one currently. And I'm, I'm not uh, feeling patient enough to sit through an install of Debian or Ubuntu uh, yet tonight. So uh, I will do that as a separate video and uh, hopefully get some interesting things out this week. Um, I was just happy today to get through the install of my new Nextcloud server and uh getting that set up so it's uh usable for my phone backup for pictures and things and that's that's all i ever really used it for um because normally what i will do is i will use our clone which uh For those unfamiliar, um, this is uh, not for the faint of heart, but uh, uh, it is cross-platform, has a huge number of cloud services that it supports, um, but you can not only do local backup to the cloud, you can do cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup uh, or syncing, or, you know, whatever you need to do. Um, and, um, for instance, if you're doing backup from a local machine to the cloud, and, and maybe it's one of the free cloud services that doesn't offer end-to-end uh, -end encryption on the free tier, uh, you can encrypt your data before it leaves your computer so that you can use the free tier of their service, but you can still have the encryption that everybody should have access to in 2024. So uh, our clone is pretty slick. Um, and yeah, there are some uh, pretty cool um, features of this if, if you want to play with it to get it set up to do what you want it to do. So 3M UK clocks change soon when we throw all the clocks away and buy new ones. <laughs> oh my. I, I wish I wish the powers that be here in the States would just uh, get rid of, of uh, switching from daylight savings time to standard time. That's, that's what I would like to throw away. Um, but anyway, I, I don't know if I'll see that in my lifetime. Wishful thinking, you know. But uh, I, I don't really want to see our government continue to be run by a bunch of geriatrics either. Uh, you should be kicked from the government once you hit 70. But that's uh, <laughs> not going to happen anytime soon, I'm afraid. Um, so, all right. Well, let's take that off and... Uh, Joe agrees on the geriatrics. Yeah. Uh, I hate to say it, but I wish the boomers would just get out of the way and let the younger generations take the reins. But uh, again, law, huh, it's, a, it's been a long time coming and, and, you know, modern medicine is keeping these people alive. Um, 
far as I know, all of Europe has one time. Well, that's good. Um, listening to the conversation, time to call tonight. Have a good one, Alonzo. And good night to you, Grashen. Uh, hopefully I didn't butcher your name too badly. <laughs> um, so, all right. Well, we made it to an hour and 15 minutes. I think I'm going to go relax for a few, and then I'm going to drop into bed and get ready to start my week all over again. I've got video editing to do tomorrow for the library and some website work. And uh, I'm not really looking forward to either one of those things. But uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, sit at my desk semi-uninterrupted during the day and just power through stuff. Uh, knock on wood. Uh, so uh, I hope everybody has a good night. If you haven't done so already, uh, please take a moment to like the um, video, the, the stream. I'd very much appreciate it. Uh, we are continuing to see growth on the channel. And uh, uh, I did, I, I will say, I did go back. And they're probably not the most accurate timestamps, but I did go back on yesterday's live stream and put some timestamps on. Uh, so if if people uh, feel the need to watch back through that video, uh, at least you'll be able to jump to some specific points, uh, and uh, then you can scrub one way or the other from from those points. So. Um, yeah, uh, there are links for this video in the description, um, including equipment that I currently use for the channel. Um, so at least for those in the U S if, if you, uh, use those, it's not going to change your cost on those items, but it will kick back a, a few, uh, pennies back to the channel. Um, which every little bit helps at this point, right? Uh, my my goal at this point, uh, with the setback that I've had, uh, is hopefully by the fall I will be buying at least one uh, soft box for the studio and and get this lighting figured out once and for all. And uh, yeah, that'll that'll be that. So. All right, everybody have a good night. I appreciate all of you for being here. And uh, I will see you in the next video.